Hey, my good YouTube people. I wasn't going to film this, but I might as well. Even though it's only like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items going out so far. But, um, yeah, so I pulled most of them already. But I'm going to grab a few more, though. Some silky, not yakky, but some jumbo braids. Color 1B. Three different hair packs, actually. $6.79 and $6.79. So, let's grab those. Matter of fact, they're right here. Um, so one of them's got a yellow top, another one's got a different yellow top, and one of them has a white top. That might be the white top, I don't know. But knowing me, I should have rubber banded them up or something. Because that's the only way to do it. Okay, there goes the yellow, the sunflower. There goes the white top, and there goes the yellow with the tick on it. Perfecto mundo. Throw the rest of these back in the box. What else we got? He's filming this way, right? All right, make it sure. All right, uh, then we got Polaroid camera. We'll get that later. And then I hope I didn't sell this before because I kind of had to bust this thing open. But um, okay, six twenty nine for Captain America Shield and six eighty nine ship. Hopefully, it's in here. Because there was a point where, uh, like, you know, I get the mystery box. Yep, it's in here. Cool. So, like, I think I oversold this, my quantity. But anyway, it's here. Not worried about it for right now. So, that's $6.29 and $6.89. Cool. It's all good. And for the last thing to pull is a Polaroid one 600 blue instant film camera vintage camera 1489 and 1489 ship right, where i put that throw this over here put the fan on and where's it a hey, right here don't have to dig in hardly anything all right, $14.89, dollars Little cool camera, kind of pops up like that. $1,600, kind of always verify what you're getting. So $1,600, same model. Close it back up. Man, man, um, I really should try to wipe it off a little bit. Might do that, might not. Yeah, one six hundred. Cool. All right, uh, and then to pack these up, motor cam. Try to show the process of packing it up. Close enough, and uh, make sure I got everything. Got them all. All right, starting off with some Pokemon. I told you there was going to be Pokemon reselling on this channel. Pokemon, pack of Rillaboom theme deck. Rillaboom is a 190 HP. Stage 2, evolves from Thwaki. That's all I know of Rillaboom. But Rillaboom theme deck sold for 1089 and 1089 all right, and while we're at it, let's put on some reselling content in the background. Yeah, that little fan ain't really hitting on much, so let's put on the AC. All right, that's better. Uh, let's put on that reselling content. Bear with me. 
What's going on guys? This is X. Mmm. Reselling. Yeah, I just go to daily refinement a lot because they just kind of get kind of in depth with it. They don't usually just hit a lot of beginner stuff a lot of times. Plus, they just talk versus they're doing visuals. But um, and taking sports, you know, reselling daily refinement. All right, and just go uh, with this. COVID, so hopefully not contagious. I think I'm good. But today I want to talk about how uh, an extra five items a day all year long is an extra eighteen thousand dollars per year, and that's actually around the max. And let's go to the podcast. You um, for your four hundred one k if you have a normal job. So essentially, if you are a full time reseller or you're working a full time job, the five a day listing habit is sort of the minimum for my channel. And if you've been listening, I mean. What's up, guys? I'm excited to end. All right, here we go. Let's give people an idea of, of how many right, items are in your store here. and how many new items you try to get into it. Um, pre go in the Sonic Bay. I was up around 5,000 items. Um, Make sure to take the brief before it over. Corona shut down where it actually fell down to around 19,000 items. Kind of point so is putting it in it there now, over but 20, doing it in 21,000, 22,000 uh, listings, but around 35,000 unique items in the store right now. And how many new items are you trying to get into your store each week? Red paper? Um, right now, we do 250 new listings per day. So in order to get up to the original 20,000 items, I was listing Take 120 it on up. items per day. Let's first let's see how much it weighs, if it's like way so under a pound. 250 items per day. I'm right, in the seven. 40 to 70 items All right, so by the time we're done, it's going right to be now, having some supply right issues. under 12 ounces. So try to push that. And my work. goal is to get to, by the end of the year, 200 a day. And I think this is something that, you know, at a certain point, if you can get at least 100 items, let's say, let's just say 15 items a day going into your store, you can start building some serious momentum. And I started this store with 200 bucks. So Far you don't board. need a huge amount of money to start. And I do want to touch base on, you know, you have rolled this money into different businesses. Do you want to go over how you sort of leverage the bank? Sure. So, um, like I said, I started with $35. I bought a T-Mobile sidekick on Craigslist and then sold it on eBay the same okay. night for 70 bucks. Um, went out the next day and bought two more and then kept doing it. Um, I was pretty young back then. And I just have all these plastics. Son. Um, my son Dave on Polly Miller. Now, so I've been at this for a little while. Um, so all the money that I get from Kinda eBay, I invest into equipment for other businesses. I right, start go. other businesses. So the first business Save. that I have is a computer repair company. I'm still up and running right now. And all the businesses I start myself um, until they're up and running enough where I can hire a little bit of help Wait. and then eventually the goal would be to step back and have the business run by itself so uh, during this whole time I sold on eBay whether part time or full time to help out and just you know continue to um, acquire money so I can just keep building those businesses so the first business that I had was a computer repair company then I had a network repair company um, right. after and that I did a lot of business 12 ounces um, on the deck. right now we have three trucks on the road we have 300 yards locally um i have a tree service we have two crews on the road putting 11 um, ounces though because it's the same thing repair for. company all right uh Rilla Boom. and all of these businesses are like fingers on a hand so we had the lawn business okay. with 300 existing customers everyone What's in the next? Lawn business has trees so day one we had 300 existing customers um everyone in the lawn business has sprinklers so day one we had 300 customers Half of the people have a pool. So they only had 150 customers. On okay, the yeah, the um, Captain so America 629, 689. The sprinklers, the pools. Uh, I have a brick and mortar store locally where I sell clothes. Right here. And I'm about to open up a second location here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so on eBay, so on Amazon. Take the Mickey D's um, bag for extraneous grease. I Not too rentals. much. I have 45 Not any at all. Up in North Florida. So 
I got a lot going on, man. I also wholesale to a lot of people in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Europe, all clothing. So all of this Rip started from up. eBay, eBay money. Um, tree equipment is not cheap. Lawn equipment is not cheap. Um, probably have over a million dollars in tree equipment, and all of that money was bought with eBay money. So it's just, like I said, there's no better way to multiply Cardboard. money than selling on eBay. Amazon card One thing that you've done that I learned from you three years ago, which I've been having difficulty trying to maintain, is when you start one business, sometimes when you start a second one, the first one starts to dip. You told me right away that you need to try to maintain one before you start another one. Take How it on are you up. able to, to do that? Because it seems like you're adding and it doesn't dip the other one. No, never. Um, whenever I do step away, like Five. I get a real strong number so one. So going to go out um, for to, example in the lawn company. Uh, the eight all ounce of those guys are related. Literally every single guy who's in the company is Good related. They're all a cousin of someone, a brother of someone, mm -hmm. um, a brother-in-law of somebody. And when those guys, when they're family, they all keep themselves accountable on a different level than like random guys. So like my number one guy for the tree service, um, I would do anything for that guy. That guy is a stand-up dude. I trust him with my life, trust him with my kid. For the brick and mortar store, I have a great number one guy. I've never had to cover a shift. They don't. Shows up 15 minutes early, the money's right. Um, that's all you could really ask for. So like the biggest thing is have a big number one guy and make sure you and take care of them and that they really feel don't appreciated. Don't feel like it right now, just gonna throw it in the pot. Do the best they can for you. Cause everyone who works for me, I consider them family and I know that they consider me the same way and I would do anything for those guys and they know that and it's hard to find that anywhere else because a lot of people have worked previous jobs where you know their their employer may have treated them like a dog or didn't yeah that ac them, sound so might like, be very loud and annoying guys, i don't know yet i guess i'll have to listen to the playback number one guy even what hope is not too unbearable bit, they're gonna 100 percent make sure that you're Eight taken ounces? care of because they're taking care of did you have to cycle through lots of people to find this person cap america mm -hmm. nobody has ever quit that i've ever hired i've never had to fire anybody uh, actually got lucky finding this guy uh what is it a guy working for the lawn the service polaroid camera 1489 1489 and from there the guy just stayed with me this forever. is surely going to be more than a pound 10 years so. and you have the same policy yeah. with with rental properties as well the tenants yeah uh priced a little bit down the market Cushion. uh just so I'd rather have a long tenant and try to find tenants every year just because I'm trying to nickel and dime them on a couple bucks. Uh, I'm under market slightly, Listen. and all of my tenants have been long-term tenants. Some of my rentals are um, just your basic yearly or two years. Some of them are owner finance. It all depends on where the if I think that One more. the land will rise to you in the future, but I have no problems keeping tenants or finding new tenants because every time someone did move out, they always had someone to fill their spot. So, like, as long as you do everybody right, they're going to do you Then right. I recently I got think. these uh, eBay boxes. So let's talk about well, I probably got like boxes how you got around. started. You flipped the T-Mobile sidekick to start. I started selling Pokemon accounts, actually. So when I started in 2017, right when I first met you, so Pokemon Go was on fire. People were outside. It was it was crazy. I live in the Bay Area, so I was catching water Pokemon and selling those accounts on eBay. And then when bots came out, and then that went away, I started looking for things to sell. I, at that time, I didn't even know you could sell used on eBay. I thought it was only vintage or new. So started looking at what to sell, and I discovered all these videos. I, I, I saw you on Instagram. How did you get started? Uh, hey. What categories? Um, when I first started, like I said, I was doing the Craigslist to eBay flips, a lot of electronics, a lot of phones, uh, and I was doing that way, way, way before a lot Throw of people. Throw in a poly were, so uh, I was doing iPods. I was doing so uh, pirate ship games, will let me get it off a little super. Nobody was doing the Craigslist to Box eBay, in a bag. All the charge around here, uh, and then it kind of got real saturated real quick. And around here, I'm from South Florida. There's a little bit of different dynamic where people from the caribbean or south america they can pay almost retail prices for things ship them overseas and Ooh. still make a profit uh -huh. so when i saw those people move in and i was One selling stuff that i was finding on craigslist to those people and they would go sell it in brazil and still make money off of it so One pound, i saw that it was getting way away. more difficult to um, acquire the stuff because the competition was getting way too difficult 
and I almost and stumbled into selling clothes nine, on accident. Um, I think I was six, probably short on money or something. Wi-Fi. And I had all of my old clothes from high school, and I had a lot of old football jerseys, like champion jerseys. And I put one on eBay and it sold for 70 bucks the same day. And, you know, Next. it kind of got me thinking and whatever. I sold my clothes or whatever. Two DVDs, two hard DVDs, Dead Man Shoes, and store she wanted to The Hitchhiker. 689 and 689 shoes. I walked in and in there was a champion jersey for like five right. bucks. And I knew I already sold those. And one and of them is a loose a disc. Bucks, I hope so that I, I, the racks. I didn't know anything, documented that in the listing. Jacket but if not, I guess so, I'll wait for him to complain um, and take it back. Back then, there was no womp, internet womp, womp. on the phones or anything like that. So just bought a couple things, took them home, threw them up, and they sold. Uh, it was pretty mind blowing that you. He's way too much McDonald's. It's a shame. But, I know. Uh, I definitely saw potential in it, and back then, like nobody was doing. Thrifting. We're talking 10, 12 years ago. Nobody was thrifting back then. So it was just such untapped potential. The prices were so cheap. Oh, and there, was a, there was not a lot of competition on eBay. And things were selling left and right. And it was crazy from the jump, honestly. So that's how I got started with clothes. And now hey. the model's a little different. But those were the days back then. So we were talking before the chat, and um, you mentioned at one point you were doing a 45 Last thrift store route. Yeah. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Um, for the better part of 10 years, I was uh, a one-man show, and I was listing 120 items per day by myself, seven days a week. Uh, pictures, measurements, listings. Uh, I was working 18, 20 hours a day for the better part of 10 years, and that's no exaggeration. Um, never took a day off. I was listing on Christmas, listing on Thanksgiving, listing on my birthday. It didn't matter. Um, in order to acquire 100 items, 120 items per day, uh, you have to find 120 items per day, which is pretty difficult. So that involved having a seven day a week route. Uh, mix all in up. a little bit of the free market, a couple garages. One more to be safe. And it ended up being 45 stores per week, and that was seven that should days be a week. You could set your watch nine ounces. to a day and time, and I'd be walking in the door oh, at a well, store well, well, well. every single week at the same time and day. So, in order to list that much stuff, you gotta find that much stuff. Ounce. Yeah, this is something that I uh, love to tell people horror. who are just starting. They'll say, I went in the Goodwill and I only found two Baby. items. And I'm thinking, I really only average two to five items per store. And we and got you have to go to a the lot of stores. You have to have a hair. Right. You have to have 679 and 679. There's a lot of Ship. people doing this, especially now. And I think now, since it's a little bit more competitive, you have to yeah, know more than band one on category. It. Um, but I still think Starts it's possible. A lot of people so are saying you get you can't yourself find things anymore. I, I totally disagree with that. I, I, I would bet my bottom dollar you could put me in a thrift store and I could come out with a couple hundred dollars in profit every single time. Every single time. So that knowledge bank, I think one of the things we talked about in our initial series was you have this massive database in your brain of all this stuff. Your biggest time hack from an outsider is just your knowledge and the streamline. Like you're not looking at the prices on things. You've built up this knowledge. Yeah, that people like always ask, man dinner. how do you list 120 items per day? How do you do it? How do you do it? Um, I, out of 120 items that I would list Put it around day, here. I would look up comps on zero items. Like if I have to look up comps on yeah. an item, it's extreme. Might not rare. be able Probably to get it under five per month just because else. I've touched millions and millions of pieces of clothes. I've just kind but of seen it I all. I could if time. I didn't use the hungry man. Uh, so really I think I'm not going to use the hungry man. Special to kind of like get me even a little bit excited after just touching millions mm -hmm. of pieces of clothes. Just throw so, it right in the poly mill. Um, you know, I just, I just buy the same things that just sell over and over again. So there's really very minimal price researching. And I think a lot of people get crippled with research. And that could be like a very Yep, I still need to get down with the, uh, to sell the same the thing over and over special, again. So, so you don't have um, to do a lot of price researching. That, that's how I can list that's so a pro tip. I, I look up zero comps. I already know the price. It's just but as you see, I just so sell long. everything. So what would but you I do say have my anything is different so. now than when you first started? How has your business evolved? Um, you know, when you first start, you have like that pile in work. the corner, that's your inventory. Then you have like a couple bins Should in the corner, and it kind of like takes over your bedroom. Then it kind of takes over your house. Then you get a storage unit. Then you get a bigger storage unit. Then you get a warehouse. Um, so, you know, I went from a pile in the corner. Now I have uh, 
6,000 square foot warehouse. Um, I hired my Levin first Elf. employee last Three August, here. which is my wife's sister. Um, and then about a month to six weeks ago, I hired the second employee. So I went Sim from the City, in the corner. Big Box, um, PC, DVD, ROM. 8.99 in 8.99 shoot. 889, 889 shoot. square foot warehouse, 35,000 unique items, 20,000 listings. Some of them have pretty heavy Love that quantity. sealed media. And now we do 250 items per day. Um, we get to that at 8 in the morning and we're done by 4 in the afternoon. And that's pretty much how it is right now. And, um, you know, things are rolling pretty good. And um, with the way the business is now, I can easily add one more person. We could be at 350 items per day. Uh, I could add 10 people and we can be at over a thousand items per day. It all just depends how far I want to take it or how Our much board, you know how we do, do it. So, um, that's where I'm at now and everything's rolling pretty good. So Tech, um, we're going to talk about kind of hey. what it really takes to build this business. I think that it's less complicated than people think, but there's more work involved. So what's your advice for a beginner reseller, somebody has decided they want to do this. They, they don't want to do their nine to five anymore. They've decided that the cool selling is going to be their career. I think selling clothes is a great niche. So I think figure out what you want to do, what you want to sell, and just be laser focused in on that. Because my entire operation is built around selling clothing from my storage system to my shipping system to my photo system to my listing system. Um, if you handed me something that would sell for 500 bucks and you asked me 50 up. bucks and it was big and bulky and that needed to be... go into a box and I had a ticket to FedEx, Ten I'm ounces. not interested in I'm interested Ten in ounces. selling clothing because that's what I'm set up for. And when when I go to the flea market this and sounds. there's items over there that, yeah, they sell for 500 big bucks, like sometimes I buy it just because I'm a fool. And but like, for the I really last thing... I, Which is I, not on this account, but this is a uh, littlest pet shop or something. Weird little creatures. I sold them for. I actually put the um, price on it, but it's uh twelve eighty nine and twelve eighty nine ship. Uglies, uglies, and one so one odd Pluto out of it. One odd Pluto dog. Goofy's dog Pluto. How does Goofy the dog have a dog? This Pluto, that's a dog. So weird. So weird. I really want to be the most attainable item on the face of the earth. Are they under a pound? Um, I get several yeah, thousand way under pieces a pound. per week. If I wanted 20,000 pieces per week, I can get it. Video games, Don't miss I can't get 20,000 video games. Shoes, I can't get 20,000 shoes. Um, Legos, I can't get 20,000 Legos. So the easiest thing that I see to scale Don't is Don't any type clothing. of cardboard around um, it. It's the... the People discard it. They think it's not worth anything. It's an easy buy-in. Well, for me, some LED um, lights. You don't have to test it. If you send it to a customer, they're not going to break it. Uh, um, still a little bit too if heavy. If you do get the return, I'm trying to they, get this thing off it's as the cheap wrong size. as possible. It doesn't fit, and guess what? You just sell it again. So for me, I think clothing is a great niche to build around. But you know, clothing isn't for right. everybody. Little Debbie cake. But I think the number one thing is, as early as possible, well, this works. Figure out what you want to build your business. Ah, that's around. even heavier. This is really, that's maybe the best advice. Might have to swallow it. In the beginning, you have to sample. You don't know what it is that you like. And I remember on, a, on an episode, I mentioned that it takes longer to ship a VCR. Trying to figure out any kind of way to, than it is to, ship a VCR. to get this in at the under 12.9 ounce rate. Of them packaging a VCR in 30 seconds. Because that's all they sold. I, I, I had not realized that there's boxes made for that. He put yeah, the that styrofoam in the styrofoam, laser. and he, he's like, it's the same thing, it. but it's my niche. 12.2. Well, right. I think we've got ourselves a That's winner. powerful. But let, let me give you an idea of how strong in a small poly. Are. We sell between 200 and 250 items per day. Today it was 270. I was out of the warehouse by... 8.30, I got there at 7, so we found 278 items in an hour and a half, and they were all done and printed by 11 o'clock. So the whole Isn't operation to pack, to pick, pack, and get everything labeled was from 7 to 10.30, 270 items today. Um, oh. If you tossed in a couple pairs of shoes and a VCR and, um, you know, 
a fidget spinner, I'd still be there tonight right now packing. And right. what else can we get done? What, you spend all day packing. This, this is great because the next question I was going to ask is what is what is the day in the life of a reseller? And one thing about you is that we'll have you go over it, but it's very okay. similar every day. Yeah, every day is the same. Um, all right, that's you know, all I got for today, folks. Like I said earlier that I was working um, 18 to 20 hours. The Beverly Hill Billies. Um, I'm up the Take your shoes off, like, set a spill. Y'all come back now, you hear? Done. So like if I